It's time for Mass with Mr. Thomas. Danger, Will Robinson. Chapter 11, lesson number four, the angle between two lines. So if we have two lines that intersect, we can find the size of the angle between those two lines. So let's say we've got these two lines here that intersect. And we can see there is the point of intersection. We are wanting to find out the size of the angle between them. How do we do that? Well, think about it. The size of the angle between the two intersecting lines will be the exact same as the angle between the direction vectors of each line. So this first line that I'm drawing, if you have a vector that's in this, the direction of that line, so the direction vector, with this other line, if you have a vector that's in the direction of that line, we can see that the angle will be the exact same. So the angle between the intersecting lines is the exact same as the angle between the direction vectors of each line. How do we find the size of that angle then? Well, the first thing we need is the direction vector of the first line. So we need to find a vector A, which is in the direction of line L1. Step two, we need to find a vector, let's call it B, which is in the direction of line L2. So the direction vectors of each line. And then step three, we'll just remember the angle between lines L1 and L2 is equal to the angle between the two direction vectors. And how do you get the angle between the direction vectors? This is something you are already familiar with from higher well, cos theta equals, perfect, you got it. Cos theta equals a dot b over the magnitude of a times the magnitude of a b. So bringing in this part from higher. Yippee! Because for step one and step two, we are wanting to get the vector that is in the direction of the lines. Well, that's easily done when the lines are expressed in symmetric form. Therefore, it's a lot easier to express the lines in symmetric form because then you can then read off the direction. So let's look at some examples. Example one, let line one and line two be the lines. This is them here. So line one, x plus three over negative one equals y take away four over one equals z over negative one. And that there is expressed in symmetric form. Perfect, that is symmetric form. Line two, we have x equals two t take away two, y equals negative three t plus one, and z equals t take away one. That's written in parametric form. It is parametric, well done. Given that the lines L1 and L2 intersect, calculate the size of the acute angle between them. So, how do we go about doing that? Well, let's take line one first of all. Line one, we have this x add three over negative one, y equals y take away four over one, and z e over negative one, and they are all equal. To get the direction vector, well, we know when it's in symmetric form, we have x take away x one over a, we have y take away y one over b, and z take away z one over c. The x, y, and z will stay as they are, x1, y1, and z1 represent a point on the line, and the a, b, c at the bottom, the denominators, are the components of the vector. So here we have on the bottom negative 1, 1, and negative 1, which means then that vector, let's call it vector a, will be negative 1, 1, negative 1. And that will be the vector that's in the direction of line L1. Moving on to line 2. Well, line 2 was expressed in parametric form. It was parametric, and it's easier to write it in symmetric form. So to write that in symmetric form, first of all, well, all we need to do is we need to take the x equals 2t take away 2 and rearrange that so we get t equals. So to do that, we would add 2 to both sides, so x add 2 equals 2t, and then divide both sides by 2, so we get t equals. So that would give us x plus 2 over 2. And we know that will equal, if we get this y equals negative 3t plus 1, in terms of t equals, we would subtract 1 from both sides, so y take away 1 is equal to negative 3t, and then divide by the negative 3. So y take away 1 over negative 3. And that would equal, and if we write this in terms of just t, well, we'd add 1 to both sides, so z plus 1 equals t. Again, you need to write it as a fraction, though, so we would have x z plus 1 over 1. And that would all equal t. Where do we go from there? Well, for line 2, that is expressed in symmetric form. 
Hello! And for symmetric form, again, just remember on the bottom you have the denominators, which will be the components of the vector. So we can say here then that vector b will have the components 2, negative 3, and 1. And that will be the vector that's in the direction of line L2. Where do we go from there? Well, we know the size of the angle between the two lines, line 1 and line 2, is going to be equal to the angle between the direction vectors A and B. So we can use the formula from higher, cos theta equals A dot B over magnitude of A times magnitude of B. You got it, well done. And we've got these two direction vectors, A and B. So, subbing them into this funky wee formula, you have cos theta equals a dot b will be negative 1 times 2, add on 1 times negative 3, add on negative 1 times 1. And we're dividing that by the magnitude of a, which is the square root of, negative 1 squared, add 1 squared, add negative 1 squared, multiplied by the magnitude of b, which will be the square root of 2 squared, add negative 3 squared, add 1 squared. If you tidy all that up, or you could have gone to the side and worked out a dot b separately, and the magnitude of a and magnitude of b separately, and then subbed them in, and that would have given you the same thing, would still end up with negative 6 over the square root of 3 times the square root of 14. Firing that into your calculator gives you negative 0 0.925 and so on. Keep that answer on your calculator. You can go one of two ways here. Either you can then do shift cos equals. So inverse cos will give you, or cos to minus 1, theta will equal 157.8 degrees. You could also have ignored the negative and worked out cos to minus 1 of 0 0.925 dot 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 dot, and that would have given you the acute angle. Here we end up with the obtuse, obtuse angle, the 157.8 degrees. If we looked at the question though, the question was saying work out the size of the acute angle between the two lines. So going down this route and keeping the negative in the calculator gives you the obtuse angle, so you can picture two lines that are intersecting. Hello! And you know the size of the angle between them would be 157.8 degrees. The size of the acute angle then, how do you get the size of the acute angle, Douglas? What do you do? Perfect. To get the size of the acute angle, you could just do 180 minus that 157.8. That will give you the 22.2 degrees. As I said, you could always have gone straight to that by ignoring that negative and working out cos to the minus 1 of the positive 0 0.925 blah 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 blah. That would have given you the 22.2. Either way, you can work out the size of the angle between the two lines. Try these questions in the Unit 3 booklet, looking at page 40. Good luck, have fun, enjoy. Woo! Bop, bop.